And here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness, the infamous double slit experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter, act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, Let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter. Like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble. A single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, Two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter, through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought. Maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So, they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. And it was here that physicists stepped forever into the strange never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles? or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? The observer collapsed the wave function 
simply by observing. The first people who did these experiments, crude experiments of this kind, were first performed almost 50 years ago, or more, 60 years ago. Um, those people were flabbergasted. 50 years ago, we were trying to understand the electron. And for God's sakes, the thing turns out to be a wave function, okay? It's a wave. You can't localize it. You try to localize it. It really slips through your fingers. It's impossible to localize. So for a while, we got used to the fact that, okay, there are no particles ultimately. There are just waves. It's called a wave function. When you go deeper into physics and you really try to get a handle on what the wave function is, you localize that wave and the wave slips through your fingers because the wave actually gets replaced in quantum field theory with something more abstract that doesn't even have a shape. It must be described instead as a simultaneous coexistence of all possible shapes. It's not even a self-respecting wave. It's something more abstract than that. It has slipped through your fingers again. And then when you get beyond quantum field theory to unified field theory, you try to even grasp the nature of that quantum field, which is already abstract, and you end up with something that's pure being, absolutely beyond the intellect to even describe. Pure abstractness, pure potentiality, pure existence. What we find is when you ain't looking, it's like a wave. When you are looking, it's like a particle. When you are not looking, there are waves of possibility. When you are looking, then there are particles of experience. A particle, which we think of as a solid thing, really exists in a so-called superposition, a spread out wave of possible locations. And it's in all of those at once. The instant you check on it, it snaps into just one of those possible positions. Quantum superposition implies that a particle can be in two places, two or more places or states simultaneously. And this is a very bizarre concept and one of the hallmarks of the quantum world. Your own mind is creating multiple possibilities in your subconscious. The superpositions of possibilities are in your subconscious. I mean, you may be consciously aware of them, but they exist. I think, in superposition of multiple possibilities, which after a while will collapse to one or the other. There's a physical reality that is absolutely rock solid, and yet it only, if you want to put it this way, it only comes into existence when it bumps up against some other piece of physical reality. That other piece may be us, and of course we're partial to those moments. But it doesn't have to be either. It, you know, it could be just some incidental uh, rock comes flying along and interacts with this fuzzy mass of stuff and sure enough it provokes it into a particular state of existence. Project or slam into the future or cast a thought uh, ahead of itself. Nice shot. But the great, great granddaddy of wacky quantum weirdness is entanglement. If time reversal symmetry destroys the notion of time, then entanglement crushes our experience of space. Two objects, two electrons created together, are entangled. Send one to the other side of the universe. Now, do something to one, and the other responds instantly. Instantly. So, either information is traveling infinitely fast, or, in reality, they are still connected. They are entangled. And, since everything was entangled at the moment of the Big Bang, that means Everything is still touching. Space is just the construct that gives the illusion that there are separate objects. Are we far enough down the rabbit hole yet? <laughs>